we're coming down to the final uh, trading days of this week. The, the first effective full week in in February, by the way. Again, it's taking all of us down uh, to Friday. That's uh, tomorrow. But today's Thursday. So let's have a very quick look back at uh, Wednesday's uh, transactions. The Nigerian market finished flat. That does not mean that the market was healthy. We lost about 900 billion naira. Put together, we've lost roughly 2 trillion naira since the start of the week. Just as the Central Bank of Nigeria yesterday conducted a massive, more than a trillion naira primary market treasury auctions yield went as high as 19% on one year Nigerian paper. The central bank is determined to get foreign portfolio investors back into the Nigerian market. So they threw in virtually everything to make it easy and sweeten the deals for foreign portfolio investors to bring in those hard currencies into the struggling Nigerian economy and help moderate decline or the devaluation, depreciation, whatever terminology you're using for the local currency, the Naira. So the stock market is taking a, some beating, even as we see earnings from last year coming through from some of the big names listed on the market. So we've been down since the start of the week. Let's see how today's Thursday will look like. The BRVM down by 22 basis points, despite some gains that we saw among some of the names, including big banking names within the French-speaking West Africa. Then you've got the EGX, a very big size, upside 2.3, 3%. As we see Goldman Sachs forecasting that up to $12 billion could be on the table for President El Sisi and his team to take from global marketplace to support the biggest economy north of the continent. Then the Nairobi stock market down by 0.7%, just as the uh, central bank under Kamal Tsuje re, uh, announced uh, an upside of 0.5% to the country's headline inflation or headline interest rate to 13%. Inflation is the whipping boy in a manner of speaking that the central bank in Kenya uh, is uh, targeting. Then you've got the GSC down by 0.3%. Uh, on uh, uh, Wednesday, as we saw the rest of the emerging markets also weakened a little bit, a uh, bit of a concerns out of whether China, the world's uh, the world's second largest economy, is on top of its game, and of course concerns whether the whole appetite that global in- central banks, the Fed, the BOE, the ECB, will cause interest rate early in 2024 is beginning to fade. It's still very tough times out there, despite some easing that we saw in economic conditions in the United States. Let's uh, take that down and roll up what the big news and headlines are this Thursday to keep on moving. The Central Bank, of course, under Kamal Tsuji in Kenya says he's seen about 5.7% GDP growth for this year against 5.6%. For last year, Kenya is confident about uh, repaying $2 billion euro bond in June. Overnight, we got news that Kenya is trying everything and asking those bondholders and everyone to step forward uh, ahead of uh, the bond maturity. Again, this whole the, uh, uh, confidence coming from uh, William Ruto's administration because of the deals he's got recently with the IMF and try to ensure that Kenya does not fall into that debt default situation that occurred to Zambia a few years ago, to Ghana last year, and Ethiopia earlier this year, failure to repay $13 million in interest payment to commercial creditors. All that in play for William Brutus trying to sidestep that particular path of uh, default. That's the big story in East Africa, Kenya. The Nairobi Securities Exchange has gotten approval from the Capital Markets Authority, the CMA, to uh, go ahead with this hybrid bond market. In Tanzania, fuel prices down by 1.07%. Good news. And thank you, Madam President uh, Usuluhu Hassan. In Safaricom, Ethiopia, is supporting loans of about 117 million US dollars. Let's leave it there for East Africa. Let's cross over to West Africa, where you're looking at Nigeria's central bank throwing virtually everything into the fire, as it were, to quench the burning of the Naira in a uh, way of speaking and get foreign investors in the outlook on February 27th. Monetary policy decision day will be around 100 to 200 or 300 basis points for Cardoso, his first monetary policy for as the central bank governor. He took office just about four months ago. The target is to also cut inflation 
to about 21.4% in the fourth quarter. Kadoso, while he had done the finance minister, the minister in charge of budget, Bagudu, were all at the House of Representatives two days ago to explain to the legislators what the state of the economy, and in particular the state of the Naira, was. All of this in play. Pizek Kuzons is causing his outlook from the UK because there's a problem with the devaluation of Naira. About 72% since last year we've seen in the decline in local currency. And that means that Pizek Kuzons says it's going to cut his dividend, cash dividend, uh, for 2024, and those announcements uh, from PZ Kusons, that British household consumer giant, that affected the share price of PZ Kusons yesterday on the London Stock Exchange, roughly 15% up north. Then you come back to Nigeria where you see Arde Holdings, which is listed on the NESD over the counter market, reporting about 9,739 uh, barrels of oil as crude oil production for is full year 2023 operations revenue came in much better, $342 million, operating profits about $136 million US dollars and EBITDA, that's earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization was also far bigger than 2022. That figure was $182 million uh, US dollars. Let's cross to Ghana, where Tulu Oil says he's going to stop oil drilling operations in the West African uh, a country, Togo, uh, says so it's ready to uh, bail out the Union Bank of Togo uh, but with about, uh, the figures about 13 billion uh, CFA fronts of its own funds. Th- these are it news across West Africa. Let's take it down to Southern Africa. We've seen the cotton fall on the mining in Daba conference. Uh, what's the big news for South Africa? Of course, the um, the uh, companies with the, the mining resources seeing prices uh, deflate a little bit, and that's according to Bloomberg News, impacting on their earnings as it were, or their profits for 2023. And that's part of the naughty year we're looking at. Gold still presents, however, a very good upside to investors and traders. In the meantime, South Africa's petrol and diesel prices has been adjusted upward by between 70 and 75 cents. That happened yesterday to the Minister of Energy and Natural Resources. And the Goyles, one of the world's largest diamond company, DBS, uh, warning that diamond recovery will be slow and sluggish uh, after that terrible year that we saw in 2023. Total Energy says it's resuming the construction and gas exploration in Mozambique. That will be by the end of the current year. And Atlas Mara of Bob Diamond's Atlas Mara has won the suit in the UK court over Zambian bank deal. Well, Malawi says it's trade deficit widens about $800 million to about $2.18 billion US dollars for the full year 2023 reporting for the past year. Let's uh, sum it up in North Africa, where there's optimism that the total deal on the table could be up to $12 billion, according to Goldman Sachs for President Al Sisi. But of course, the uh, country has, uh, the president has also approved the raise of the minimum wage in the country by 50% to about 6,000 Egyptian pounds, and that's about 194 US dollars. The parliament in Tunisia, under President uh, Saeed, has uh, approved $2.25 billion central bank direct funding for the government. Scott Wilson means we got to turn to the central bank to support the government because President Saeed is rejecting a number of uh, uh, deals on the table put forward by the International Monetary Fund to get that much support from Washington. And the World Bank is pledging to back South Sudan's financial reforms. Next door, Ethiopia, carrying out steady reforms under Prime Minister Abiy. As far as the financial services sector is concerned, now South Sudan is looking at its southern neighbor uh, uh, to see if it could just go the same route. And finally, Morocco's support in foreign investments down 50% for last year. And those are your headlines as we start another trading day across frontier Africa. I am Bustin Mofa. You have a great day. And I'll be back very soon on Frontier Opening Bell.